Hello, welcome to Do It Yourself with Wayne. Do you have a, a chimney that you need to clean once in a while? Well, I do, and I'm gonna show you how I clean it. Uh, I got a wood stove in my living room. You'll be seeing that a little bit later on. And uh, I don't burn good wood because it's not what I got. I have to burn pine because it's what I have. And because of that, I get a lot of creosote buildup, not just some. Uh, because of that, I have to clean my flue at least three or four times a season. Uh, it gets to be quite a drag, but you know, when you burn pine, you've got to be more diligent about keeping that flue clean or you're going to have trouble. But anyway, uh, you can burn pine as long as you keep your flue cleaned out well. And uh, so now, I'm going to start taking this one apart and show you what I do. But in order to clean it, you've got to have tools. Um, mine is six inches in diameter, so I got this six inch brush. Uh, I've had this thing for years, used it a bunch of times. I got these rods that screw into each other uh, to give me the length to run this brush up and down the flue. And uh, that's what we'll be using. We'll be using this to clean it. Also, when I take the top part off, I'll be taking that to my workbench. Um, and we'll be using a wire brush to clean this uh, to get all the creosote off of this part. So now we're going to start taking things apart so we can get to it. Okay, um, so now we're going to start taking this thing apart so we can get the brush down through the flue. First thing I do is take the, the cap off of it. I've got my impact driver here. Works great for that. Just do that. And this thing will come off. Alright, <clears throat> now in my case one problem that I have is once I get the brush all the way down in there, this is so high it's hard to pull it back out. So I generally take this section of pipe off down to here to make it easier for me to do that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take this off. Can you zoom in on this? See the crud inside. Okay, this is the crud that is typically on the inside. That's the, the creosote stuff that can catch on fire and cause a chimney fire. Uh, that's what you're trying to clean out. And sometimes it gets built up a lot heavier than that. Uh, like I said, it's um, been a while since I cleaned this out, but it hasn't been. I haven't used my stove a lot since the last time I cleaned it. So this is not real bad. Believe me, I've seen it a lot worse than this before. But that's the clearest creosote that needs to be cleaned out. And uh, contrary to what I used to always think, uh, the creosote that builds up is not soot. It's not ashes. It's a hard, crusty stuff. Um, I don't know how well you can see that. If you can zoom in on that. That's some of the creosote that builds up in the chimney. Now, like I said, I've seen it a lot worse than this before, but this stuff here is hard, it's crusty, and that's the creosote. And if it builds up enough, it can catch on fire. And that's why you clean your chimney. You don't want that to happen. And also, I have had mine get built up so, so bad that the chimney wouldn't even draw smoke good. Uh, I never had it get stopped up. Yeah, I've never had my chimney get completely stopped up, but I have had enough creosote build up that it didn't draw smoke very well. So that's part of why we do this. We want to prevent the chimney fire and we want to keep, 
keep the chimney performing well where the smoke goes out. Got a squirrel running around. Uh, so the smoke draws well. So that's what we're doing. Now one thing I would re recommend that you do with your rods before you start, and I know what I what length of rods I need, but uh, just to demonstrate what you may want to do is uh, when you run this down through there, it's hard to tell when you get to the bottom because sometimes it gets really hard to push it. So what you can do, once you put your rods together, you just run them down in there and see how far it is, how much rod length you need to reach the bottom. Turn the rod down through there. Okay. Now in my case, that right there is the bottom where the, the, the flue turns to go into the back of my stove. And so that's as far as it needs to go. Now what you I would recommend that you do, I got some tape here somewhere if I can find it. Get you some tape, black, blue, red, it don't matter. Just just something to mark the top. Now that way when you're running your brush down through there, you know when you get to that, that's where you need to stop. Now remember, right now your brush is not on the rod, so you really need to stop about there because you gotta add the length of your brush to where your blue mark is at. So you really need to stop when it's right there, not here. Just keep that in mind as you're running your brush down in there. All right, now we're gonna tighten this up a little bit more. We don't want this thing to fall apart. Now we're gonna put the brush on. Push it down in there. And as you can see, it's getting harder right there. That's not unusual. I think when it gets mine gets to the flue that's actually in the house that you can see, I think it's a little bit tighter and it's harder to push it down through there. That's one reason you want to mark your rod so you know how far to go. And sometimes you just need to push it up and down some. And there's more of that free soap coming out that you want to get rid of. Okay. As you can see, it's pretty tight on down in there. That's something I always put up with. I marked my rod as being to the bottom. You had the brush, you should be about here when the brush is all the way to the bottom. So I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting closer because it does get tighter down there. You can see how hard that was to get the brush to come back up. there is probably where I'm at the bottom or as close as I'm going to get. As you can see my rod went to here. The brush probably extends to here but with the turn of the stove pipe it probably adds a little bit. But I know I'm close enough so at that point we just work this thing up and down a few times.
and all that black crusty stuff is what you're trying to get out. It's not soot that's in your stove pipe. It's that black crusty stuff, the creosote. And as you can see, as you run it up and down a few times, it gets easier because you're getting that stuff out. All right, there we go. Now, I need to run through this part here a few times. that pile of black stuff here on the, on the roof. That's the creosote coming out of just this piece. And like I said, I haven't used my stove a lot since the last time I cleaned this. Normally I get a lot more than that. So that's why you want to clean this thing to get that crap out. Because like I said, it builds up enough it can't catch on fire. Now we're going to take this part, I'm going to go down to the workbench and disassemble it a little bit and clean it up real good. Okay, here I am ready to clean the, the cap off my uh, wood stove flue. As you can see, I'm dressed a little different. It started raining on us as we were doing that, so we had to stop. It's been a couple days now. Uh, we're going to start out, we're going to take this thing apart. Got some thumb screws here. We'll take these off.
usually they're not too hard to take off sometimes they get a little bit of creosote on them you may have to uh, take your wire brush and clean the threads a little bit uh, this particular time they weren't hard to get off but if they are a little wire brush on those threads and it doesn't hurt to clean them a little bit when you're doing this makes it a little easier to put things back together. We're going to take the top off. You can probably hear all the crunching. That's the creosote. The stuff here is what you want off. Now anybody that thinks that soot builds up in your chimney, now anybody that thinks that soot builds up in your chimney, they're wrong. This is the crap that builds up. It's called creosote. Once you're cleaning out this stuff there's a bigger piece you can see that I mean it, the stuff just crunches if you crunch uh, mash on it but that's the stuff we're cleaning out this screen comes off here we want to clean that with a wire brush we want to clean this a lot of this a putty knife will take off As you can hear, it makes a lot of noise because it's a real crusty stuff. I just lost some of my parts, but there they are. So basically, this is what you're getting out. I know I keep saying this, but that stuff right there, if it builds up enough, it will burn. Uh, it will catch on fire and cause you trouble. I'm going to push that off to the side over there just to kind of get it out of my way. Folks, this time, <laughs> it really hasn't been that long since I cleaned this thing. Uh, I say it hasn't been too long. I mean, it was, you know, the end of uh, you know, last winter. Uh, you know, so it's been months, but I haven't had very many fires since then. So this thing really wasn't too bad. Um, I have actually had times before where this screen got almost clogged up to the point that smoke couldn't get out. And then I have trouble with the, the wood stove in the house. Just wouldn't draw because this thing was so clogged up. Uh, one time I let it go, and uh, I actually had a fire up here because the creosote built up so much. Don't let that happen. You know, if you have to clean this thing out once a season, if you have to clean it out, you know, once a month, do what you got to do to make sure this the creosote creosote doesn't build up much in this thing because it is a fire hazard. Uh, most of this stuff can, can take a little bit of fire, um, but it can't take a lot. And depending on how your flue is installed and, and a lot of different factors, you know, the age of your flue, uh, it's just a really bad thing to have a fire in your flue, and you don't want that. So keep this stuff clean. Um, when you clean it, it doesn't have to be spick and span. Don't worry about that. Just get the bulk of it off. Get as much as you can off. And then put this thing back together. Put it together like so. Then we'll put these little thumb screws back on. And uh, 
this part will be ready to go back on the chimney or the, the flue. Might could have cleaned the threads a little bit better, but they're going on there. That's the tight one right there. We just snug those things up. And there you are, you're ready. You got it cleaned up as good as it needs to be anyway ready to go back on the top of the flue. So now that's what we're going to do. We're going to put it back on the top of the flue. Okay, here we are. We're back out here. Uh, you may notice this thing. It's a piece of granite. Not that you need a piece of granite to do this project, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, we were about halfway through this project and it started drizzling rain. We had to stop. So I wanted to put something up here to keep water from going down my flue. And I had this piece of granite, uh, a block of wood or something would have been fine. But anyway, I'm going to take that off and set it down over here out of my way. And then here's my cap. Just turn it around the way I want it. Squeeze it down on there. Then there's a screw right there. Just like that and we're finished up here. Now we've got to go inside and clean out the stove. Because a lot of the stuff that we brushed from up here is now down in the, the flue at the back of the stove. So now we've got to go clean that out and uh, then we'll be pretty close to ready to light a fire. Okay, this is my stove in my living room. This is the stove that goes to the flue that goes out the top of the, the roof that we just cleaned out. And uh, if you hear that ding, the, this pipe will ring like that if it's good and clean. It doesn't take much creosote and you don't get that ring. Uh, so that's an indicator that you can use if you have you know, the, the metal stove pipe like this leading out from your stove. Uh, but I will tell you that that ringing noise goes away pretty quickly when you start burning wood, particularly if you have to burn pine like I do. And another thing I'll show you a little later, this is my little cast iron pot for putting water in to boil it. Looks like a little dragon. Uh, put water in there. But the really neat thing about this little cast iron dragon pot is when it, the water starts boiling, steam comes out his nose. Uh, like I said, I'll be showing you that toward the end or at the end of the video. Uh, so if you're interested in one of these, um, you know, you can find them online, but uh, I'll be showing you how that works as well toward the end of the video. Now let's proceed with cleaning out the inside of the stove. Okay, here we are, um, ready to clean out the stove. Uh, this stove is plenty cold, it hasn't had a fire in it a good while now. Um, but always make sure you got a metal bucket to put your ashes in. Uh, even if stoves or a fireplace have been out for a while, you can possibly have a coal buried down in there somewhere that's still hot. Uh, always put your ashes in a metal container. Uh, some years ago I lived next to a lot that basically had a foundation, which was all that was left. Because the folks that lived there cleaned out a fireplace and put the ashes in a uh, plastic bucket and set them on the back deck. They thought the ashes were cold, but they weren't. And then they went into town do a little shopping when they came back they didn't have a house anymore so don't let that happen to you always put your ashes in a metal container okay now um, like I said this stove has been cleaned out for a while so we've got a lot of ashes to get out first and uh, so we're gonna start getting these ashes out I suppose most of you have done this before if you're watching this video, but uh, 
you want to be real careful you don't stir this stuff up any more than you can help because those ashes will get all over your house if you ain't careful um, so just go slow and easy take your time get your ashes out put them in a metal bucket I stirred that up just a little bit. See all that ash coming out? That stuff will end up all over your furniture. Hope you didn't dust recently. Almost to the back of it. Now once I get these ashes out, I'll, I'll be able to get to the back of the stove where the flue is at and get the creosote out of the flue that we brushed down from, from the roof. Bumped it a little bump side that time. That's not good. At least I didn't have a lot of ashes in the shovel that time. I got ashes that want to fall out of the shovel. Okay. I'm going to take this out and dump it. Just to get it out of here. I'll be right back. Okay, here we're looking into the front of my stove, and this is really hard to get a good shot of. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. And that's the flue going out the back of the stove. And uh, I'm sorry for the shaky camera here, but uh, I'm struggling just to get anything. But that black crud back there in the back, that's the creosote that we've brushed out of the flue. So now we're going to rake that out and shovel it out into our uh, ash bucket. So that's the next thing to do, and unfortunately I can't show you doing that because I can just barely make this shot. But uh, I will show you getting it out of the stove. Okay, that stuff is hard to get out from back there. Uh, I use my shovel some, I use my poker some, and um, we'll see how well we can get it out. Right there is a shovel full of creosote that we brushed out of the stove. And a second shovel full. Okay, that got most of it out. Now I'll scrape it out of the stove. And 
just keep in mind that's the hard crusty creosote that I got out of the flue and uh, it really hasn't been the stove really hasn't been used that much since the last time I cleaned it so as you can see when you're burning pine you really shouldn't burn pine in the stove but if you do if you have to like I do because it's all I've got uh, make sure you keep that flue cleaned out on a regular basis because the creosote really builds up quickly so uh, that's about it uh, going to do a little cleaning up here I got a little bit of a mess I've made and uh, so that's about it uh, so anyway uh, we appreciate you visiting do it yourself with Wayne and if you find this video helpful we really appreciate it if you click like on it if you want to see more of our videos subscribe to our channel there's also a bell you can click on to be notified when we uh, upload new videos and um, anyway we hope this helps you to save some money on cleaning your own flue out you know, there are people that make a living out of cleaning fireplace flues for people and it's not that hard to do it takes you a little time you got to get up on the roof maybe but you know if you're careful and you got a couple of little tools that don't cost that much you can do it yourself so thank you for visiting do it yourself with wayne and have a great day